I'm sure, incredibly busy since we're talking to you at Christmas. I, am I right? Is that correct? It is. Like, I've noticed that, um, especially this year, it's busier. I think people are done with the home baking since <laughs> we've had the pandemic. <laughs> and so now people are like, wait a minute, there's yeah, bakeries the around. Baking. Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty proud of myself. I paced myself and did zero baking during the pandemic. So, um, Timmy, you probably don't remember this. But you actually made a magnificent cake for Susanna's second birthday. That's oh my only gosh. been yeah. 15 we years ago. We had it at a farm, and you made a cake for us and had a little haystack and, like, farm animals. Oh, my gosh. This, is, this was when I was out of my home then. It was magnificent. Yeah. It that's was magnificent. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, no, you don't remember it, but like, <coughs> I, awesome. I know I don't expect Timmy to remember it either because I'm sure you've baked a cake or two. <laughs> 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 but or was it at Fender's Farm? Um, no, it no. was actually at this little farm that was up in um, Sullivan County somewhere. I couldn't find it again for you if I had to. Okay. I picked the cake up and took it with us and managed to not destroy it. So, okay. yay for me. That's awesome. Anyway, I would yeah. think birthday so cakes are high pressure. Are, uh, not quite as high pressure as wedding cakes. Oh, yeah, so, no wedding cakes. Oh, my gosh. Which is interesting because wedding cakes aren't as hard as birthday cakes. Just in general, birthday cakes have always have little themes, farm animals, and things like that yeah. on it. And then wedding cakes are just all white, all white with flowers yeah. on it. And uh, it's yeah. easier, but the pressure is way higher. Yeah, oh, brides, yeah. Get, brides get crazy. The pr mm -hmm. Everything about a wedding is mm -hmm. high pressure, it Absolutely. seems. And yeah. the cake is... The last thing you want to do is ruin someone's wedding over their cake, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, at the wedding, there are a few things that, like, what does her dress look yes. like? You know, uh, and uh, what's the cake look yes, like? <laughs> absolutely. Well, but yeah. then it also has to taste good, right? Mm -hmm. You've had those cakes that have been like beautiful, mm -hmm. magnificent sculptures, right? And then you're just like, oh my god, <laughs> that's a terrible cake. Timmy, so. go go there, my friend. Be judgy. Is oh there, yeah. There? Oh, well, you know. <laughs> I did it, and I still do it. I go to oh, a whatever. wedding, and they didn't have my cake. I'm like, wait, let's see what this cake's all about. Yeah, then. let's this break this cake down. What is this cake? <laughs> this is, and what so, is this trash? <laughs> yeah. well, obviously, they didn't buy it from Cake Buds. <laughs> yeah, Susanna, make a note that we are going to have to consult uh, Timmy Norman about your wedding cake In someday. 15 years. When she gets married. No, I think she probably should be married before she's 32. <laughs> oh, that's not bad. Timmy, I was looking. I love your Instagram. Thank you. Because your Instagram makes me happy. Uh, and I need happiness right now, Timmy. I'm sorry, right. but we I need do. some happiness yes. right now. And my goodness, Buddy the Elf is what in the heck? I don't know. Um, so lately I've been on this journey to. I'm pulling this up so you guys can see it. Perfect. People. It and because I've done people before and everybody always knows who they are, that's fine. Isn't but, that the goal? Yes, but I want it to look like that person as much as possible. And so lately I've been, okay, let's do, I did um, Bette Midler from Hocus yes, Pocus. that was fantastic. For Halloween, and then I did Buddy the Elf for Christmas, and it has just been so much fun. Did you do that for a client? No. And so these are just my personal projects that I do on the side because it's just about perfecting skill and those kinds of things. I, I Is that yeah. not unbelievable? Yeah. Did you see that, Leighton? Yeah, You've that's got to get amazing. that for Buddy so the heart. What is, what is that? Is, that um, is there fondant involved in that or that's frosting? That's actually um, modeling chocolate. And so modeling, modeling chocolate, chocolate you make with... Um, any kind of chocolate, really, and then corn syrup. And so it turns into this clay. Uh -huh. And the really cool thing about modeling chocolate oh that differs it from fondant is fondant will dry out and you can't blend it back together. Modeling chocolate, the warmth of your hand can often just you know, yeah. bring it back oh. to room temperature okay. enough that you can blend it together again. So you less seams with modeling chocolate. Yeah. So if mm -hmm. you're listening to this, get on Instagram. At go Cake to CakeBuds, JC. And you have got to see the artistry involved in this, um, in, in using this modeling. Oh, and you dropped the social tease here. Leighton, our executive producer, mm -hmm. would give you props, I bet, for this. Because sneak peek of a piece of being unveiled soon. And it looks like some little gifts at the bottom yeah, of a tree. Yeah, so this is some, like, you wouldn't believe it looking at this little section of this. But this is something that took probably 100 hours to do. Oh because gosh. it's like three feet by two feet. This, like 
crazy gingerbread sculpture. Wow. And, and this I'll, is not for a client. This is for a competition, oh. um, local competition. Okay. So um, I don't know when this will air, but <laughs> go down to Jonesboro for their gingerbread competition, and uh, you'll be able to see it. We put it up oh, yesterday. okay. Oh. It's not live yet, but Friday it will be. You're reminding me, Timmy, that along the way you have had to be secretive. Lots. Yeah. More mm -hmm. than once yeah. when it comes to <laughs> what you are up to mm -hmm. and why. So let's go back in time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you are... Is that your time machine? That was yep. my time machine. That Holy we now, cow. Okay, we're now back in what year? Hold on a little bit further. Okay, now we're back in what year? 2017. T okay. Let's How go, far back are we going? Let's go, Okay, back Beginning. story back to when somebody says, Timmy, make the Johnson City Medical Center. Um, Weren't you working for the medical I center? I was. You were working you were for the graphic medical center artist, right? In the marketing department, doing medical forms design. Woo! Um, that's some exciting stuff. Yes, it was. <laughs> oh my god! Becky, who's filled out more, she's a physician. So. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I made the, all those for you. I, I, uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, no. Thank you for making the form. Somebody's got to do it. I had to make forms um, for our my practice over at ETSU. Uh -huh. I had to make the form, the template forms for. The f the pediatric physicals and oh yeah. See when I, I did it when I did it they were still paper yeah they hadn't gone electronic yet right and so you know one change takes an entire committee and all these approvals because you're then printing them all yep yeah. Yeah. It's not just, now they just do it all electronic, so God it's much better. I love you. I'm picturing you running home at night and just getting out a b b bag of flour and, and yeah, it was literally a, therapy in the kitchen. Was that, that was what it was. And so, like, you know, making cakes was a, a, a journey for self-fulfillment, really, because I, I come from an artistic background, and I did a lot of sculpture and drawing and things like that in art, and then I was making medical forms. Totally different, <laughs> not a creative outlet at all. So, you know, there was this problem that I had that I needed to be creative, and then my son also needed a cake. And so those two oh, just yeah. collided with, like, well, let's make a cake, which <laughs> the week before that is my parents' birthday. They're born on the same day. And so oh. I was like, I want to practice and make them a cake, which ended in tears. <laughs> like, I can't make cakes. Like, this, what am I doing? Now I've got a week to make my son's cake, and it's got to be right. Son's second birthday. Let me get this straight. Yeah. You, buy, you made your mom and daddy a birthday cake, and it yeah. was awful. But I got super lucky in that it flooded and the party got canceled. <laughs> and so there was, there was no... Thanks, yes, God. <laughs> there was no, where's the cake at? Because it didn't matter. So, it was yeah. like, get to high ground. It's like, yep. oh, rats, the flood destroyed the cake. Like, I don't think we can have the party. I think you're right. We you're can't right. have the party. No, that would be terrible. Uh, we don't want to risk everyone's life. So, so then you've got like a, w a week between yeah, their birthday and your son's. Exactly seven days have to make my son's birthday cake. And I already planned it out. It's going to be the sculpted train. And I just failed at making a round cake. So <laughs> there was like, you know, a lot of pressure. But I mean, it turned out like that failure and the, the week leading up was night and day difference. And so it was like, wow, I can actually probably do this. Yeah. And so it just went from there. Then I was working in the marketing department. We had a birthday coming up. And I was like, I'm gonna make a cake I for that. Make a cake, yeah. Yeah, and so it just, it just, it just grew, you know. Oh just my gosh! And then they say make a cake that looks like the the the, jo the Johnson City Medical Center. I think Center. the first one I did for them was the Children's Hospital. Oh, nice one, Children's yeah, Hospital. Yeah. So when it when they had their ribbon cutting for that, I did that cake. I hope you charged them a lot. <laughs> Not enough. That's the <laughs> I, I learned. Because from there, I did that one. I did Franklin Woods Hospital, oh I think, gosh. was the next one. And then... That would be hard, because that, that, that place is really... Yeah, cool. and the Franklin Woods Strip one was cool. six feet long. And I made it in my kitchen at my home. Ooh. Getting it out of the house was like my first real like, oh, wow, you're supposed to measure the doors first. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like... I didn't know this. <laughs> and so luckily it wasn't a tall building because Franklin Woods is flat and like long. long. Yeah. And so I was able to kind of. It's a green hospital. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, no, it's that would hospital. be. Oh, yeah, I, be would, terrifying. I would be stressed about that. There's lots of lessons learned in my home kitchen. Yeah. yeah. So the moment came when you said, 
I am going to make this happen as yeah. my line of work. And yes. did you think it's going to be called Cake Buds? And did you think I Yeah, I've already that been happen? working under Cake Buds before I was like, this is going to be what I do. So you've been, it was kind of your side hustle. Right. So I was like, oh, Cake Buds, um, which all came from like Taste Buds. It's like, oh, yeah. You know, and I had this, <sighs> this slogan at the time that was cake that satisfies your buds, you know. <laughs> It was corny, yeah. But, you know, <laughs> I've dropped the tagline, and okay. now we're cake yeah. buds. Now yeah. you're just cake, cake buds. buds. Yeah. Um, or yeah. buddies who make cake. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. We're yeah. cake buds. I, right. I love that. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's a whole new brand for you. I know. It's, so then you say, I quit. Yeah. So How I was terrifying. I was in the marketing department wanting a graphic design position, but I was still doing medical forms design. I had applied to a couple of positions that came open in the department and didn't get them. And so finally there was just like, okay, so I'm, I'm making cakes all night and I'm working all day and I'm probably not going anywhere in this position, which is okay. So what do I do? And so it, it was very easy for me to say, I remember I applied for a position. I didn't get it. And the next day I gave my, I yeah. gave like a month notice, notice yeah. because I, I needed to train someone to, d to do forms. Right. And so I was like, I'll give you a good notice, but I'm, I'm going another route. Um, and that was very easy to do. Mm -hmm. And so I did that and didn't look back. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's great. Good mm -hmm. for you. Can I ask a question? Yes. Did you ever make a cake that looked like a medical form? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Talk of that's ultimate therapy. That would yeah. be irony. I would have had to do that on my last day. Oh, that would have been cool. With a, with the words scribbled across, I quit. Well, <laughs> yeah, you know, because I like to leave in grand style. When I left my last job, they asked me if I wanted uh, punch and cookie reception. And I looked at him, my boss. I said, I get to punch people. <laughs> <laughs> this would be great. That kind of punch. I was like, I was like holy cow. So yeah. that's what year? That Kate Butts was officially born as a as your full time gig, 2011, and you moved to downtown Johnson City to your beautiful mm -hmm. shop. In what yeah. year? Yeah, that in was 2011. 2011. That's, I oh quit, my goodness! And then I quit. My last day was in first uh, of September, and I opened the end of November. Wow. Man, mm -hmm. when was your first debut into the world of national Food Network competition? That was 2018. No, is that I filmed in 2018. It was 2019 that it that it aired. Um, you applied, right? Did you send? I did not apply to that one. I had applied while I was doing um, graphic design at the hospital to be on one that was on TLC with the Cake Boss. Oh yeah. And I got into like I think it was the top 17, mm -hmm. and they did a final cut of 10, and I didn't make the cut. And I never. I just like okay, this was literally months before I opened. And so I was like, okay, now I'm running a business. Let's not go down that route. And so in 2018, I received a call from a number from LA. Didn't answer it. spam calls. You know, we we all avoid those numbers. And there was a voicemail. Hey, this is Megan from Food Network. I'll never forget her name. She was like, um, we're casting for a show. We wonder if you're interested. And I was. How did they find you? Is my exact question. So I go, I call her back immediately. I talk to her for a few minutes. She kind of gives me the layout of how things will go as far as, you know, the interviewing process. And I was like, you know, this is great, but how did you hear about me? Like, right. I, I got to know. And she said, you know, there are, there are casting directors and there are people that are looking. She said, and, you know, at some point someone has seen your Instagram or your social media of some sort and taken note of it. And so we follow up. And I was like, okay, this is awesome. Like, See, I mean, yeah. here's everybody bashes social media, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Social media sucks. But uh, no, I mean, I'm going to go, you can put it on any kind of, well, I don't want a tombstone because I don't want my body buried, but, you know, on my memorial plaque, yes, right, right. <laughs> please put died saying social media is has good points okay yeah. i mean put it on there yeah. well, it launched your i mean uh, an, i mean a journey for you yes so that honestly was over two years right yes. i mean you're still really kind of still on this journey yeah absolutely i still i mean every day you still see the effects of that first yes i'm gonna I'm, I'll, I'll be there you know so that was what show 
that was winter cake all it was a new show they only had one season which didn't they didn't finish airing the season it just was a show that didn't pick up Mm -hmm. you know and um how'd you do i was first eliminated Um, (laughs) it it was a terrible i remember that yes so i just i knew going into the competition that if i could get past the first round i'd be okay because the second round was way more my style it's cake sculpting and it's not this like make this little topper for a cake. like cupcakes using sardines right yeah <laughs> and so like i knew that if i could get through the first round i'd be okay and so that was my goal and i didn't do it and i felt like such a failure and i was like i can't believe i went all the way to la and like i turned away all this work at home because i'm going to be gone and i just like lasted an hour you know it's just <laughs> heart-wrenching and so I'll never forget that. And I remember coming home and saying, I'm not going to tell anyone I went. I'm not going to post it on social media. Like, this is my initial first thought. Oh, you wow. Know? I'm going to Because hide. I, I take pride in what I do, and yeah. that certainly wasn't something that I was proud of. And so I remember coming home like, nope, no one's going to know. I'm just going to – I'll watch the show for myself, and yeah. I'll be good. And uh, then, Timmy, I saw you on the Food Network. What? I right. don't know what you're talking about. That, that was that, me. That was not me. That was, that was me. some other male that, model. And, you know, it took a little bit for that to settle me to say, you know what, this is an opportunity because it's from a marketing standpoint. When I push this, no one's going to know how I did. Right. right? right. And so when I'm saying, hey, I'm on Food Network right. on this show, you don't know when you turn on the TV how I did, but sure. you're going to turn on the TV. Sure. Yeah. And so it was this like, OK, so. I can let people know so that they know, hey, there's a bakery in Johnson City yeah. that they may never heard of, which was crazy to me. I've been in business seven years, eight years at that point, and there were still people that didn't know me. Yeah. And so they were like, oh, wow, I've seen you on TV. And so from a marketing perspective, it was genius to just yeah. go ahead and be like, you know, take the loss, but, you know, show people when they are looking for you during this time what you're actually capable of. Yeah. And so I was, like, really striving during that time to, like, all of my cakes on social media are going to be the best, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so it's like, because they're going to come and look. Right. And so that's way more representative. People understand that that's more representative of who you are and what you do than, than what you, they see in that hour on TV. I love that. Yeah. But don't you think too, like, wasn't it Thomas Edison who, who said something about like, yeah, I, 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 I don't look at him as a thousand failures. Mm-hmm. I look at him as a thousand lessons. I mean, yes. I think, I think that experience on social media yeah. must have been a building experience mm-hmm. and, right. and also some value in that too. Yes. Like then you, you knew where to go and you knew who mm-hmm. to talk to. And I, yeah, I think it's awesome. Well, that right. experience in a network level television studio, yeah. you yeah. know, having to bake under pressure and yes. dealing with the, the world that does not look like I'm sure it looked on television. Exactly. You know, yeah. So the, the learning experience from that alone, I mean, the, the very next show that I was on was, you know, right out a year later, I was back filming and I was shocked immediately. Like, oh, wait, like I'm, I'm like a different person right. on yeah. this show. Like it, it's, it was an immediate change. And so, like, just the lesson of that one time, yeah, paid for the second time, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And which, that was which that was which ho- you then won. That was Holiday Wars, yeah. Holiday. So I was runner up in that one, oh. but and it was that's a, the team competition. It was a team competition, yes. four weeks long, and so. Um, and that's the one you did with Angela. No, I did that one with three oh. others. Oh, okay, so it was a me, Kathy, Teresa, and uh, Elizabeth, the British lady, the British lady, who 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 they paired you with big time. You two were the kind of the ringleaders of that team. Yeah, we were. You know, we did a lot of the like detail sculpting ca- kinds of things, and then our sugar artist Teresa did all the sugar stuff, and then um, Kathy did. She did so much of the like backdrops and boards, which were like. Huge Yeah, it projects. was unbelievable. Like, Do, I mean, this is not cakes. These are almost like <laughs> exhibits. These are <laughs> five feet by six feet. Wow. So they're huge. Yeah. They're huge. And then the backdrop is four feet tall, I think. So you're looking at this giant piece. And yeah. then you come at runner-up, and then mm-hmm. you then the final competition. Then the uh, next show you were on. The next show, um, Elizabeth and I, because we worked so well together on Holiday Wars, was like, hey, let's go do this together. Did they invite you? Um, you applied, or how's that we work? We both got invited. We both applied with each other as our assistant. They picked us both to compete against each other. Oh, no. Which was really funny. We were like, we called each other like, 
hey, um, can you go on this date? She's like, and she's like, yeah, that's the date they just called me about. And I was like, oh my gosh, they put us together, like against each other. And so we're like, hey, we're, we're together on this one. So we just, you know, opted to compete together on that one. And then we won that one. That was Food Network Challenge, which was the show that I grew up watching. Yeah. Whenever I started oh. making cakes, that's the show I watched was Food Network Challenge. That was so cool. Yeah. And so it's so cool to go back to that show and like actually compete in it. It was, I mean, it was a totally different show. Like it was laid out different than, mm-hmm. than I'd remembered. But um, yeah, we won that one. And it was like, wow, like I've gotten better and better each time. So it's been really cool. And then the last one was um, Big Time Bake with Angela that works with me. She and I went. And that was just, that was the icing on the cake, you know, as they say, it really was. Because mm-hmm. you won. Yeah, we won, but we won every round. Like there's three rounds in the show. And I don't think there was a moment that we questioned that we hadn't won. Like wow. we just kind of felt it. Like everything flowed right. Everything was exactly how we envisioned it. Um, and so it was just this very fulfilling six hours. <laughs> you know, we like, we just kind of felt the whole time that like we're really doing it today. So you walk into that. I, I mean, I, I've been thinking in terms of, um, so our, our football team in Elizabethan is going back to the state championship right, yeah. this year. Yeah, and they, yeah they won last year, mm-hmm. but you can tell there's a swagger. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, so, yeah. so I see Timmy Norman walking onto a Food Network set, and you got the swagger. You know, it was. It's funny to hear Angela <laughs> to hear Angela's perspective of that because she's like, "I had you." Like it was her first time, and she's like, "You just knew what to do." Yeah. Like, the, and there's, it, you know, it's a lot to like actually go in there knowing. Yeah. Like, okay, I kind of know how this is going to lay out. Like, right. I don't even see the cameras anymore. They're mm. there, but they're there. Yeah. And I do a lot on camera myself. I just, I like to film and right. do things. And so that had all turned out to be, you know, extremely helpful going into a challenge like that. Mm. So what do you say then? Okay. So you, you took your dream. I mean, making mm-hmm. your son's, making your failed <laughs> blooded birthday. <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh-huh. Um, working a nine to five that was not mm-hmm. particularly fulfilling right. for you. Mm-hmm. Right. Although I still want you to make the cake that looks <laughs> like a medical form. Yes. But, <laughs> but uh, what do you say to the person though, who's got the dream? Right. Right. Yeah. And and so you took it from that all the way to really being on a, a national platform now. Like when Food Network says we got a cake competition, right. somebody calls Timmy over in yeah. Johnson City. Mm-hmm. What what do you say to them? How, what do you say to them to make them believe enough in themselves right. to take to bake that cake? Mm-hmm. You know, right. or yeah. you know, or to take that first step, or you know, make that first yeah. phone call. What do you say? I think first step in anything like that is defining success. For yourself. Oh, good. Right? So, like, my success is not your success and, or yours. And so we're go- all going to have a different definition of what success is. And so I think once we set ourselves aside and we say, okay, this is success to me, and then being willing to be Clark Kent. I love superheroes. So yeah. being willing to say, okay, I'm Clark Kent, but I'm going to take the step into the, the phone booth. Yeah. yeah. And so, like, we, I think we all can have that ability to say, you don't know. go in the phone booth. You, you're going to fail. <clears throat> See, like, that's what Josh would say because yeah. that's what Josh always says, yeah. it, and it makes me want to pull all of his hair out. You know, before we started hanging out, he had a full head of hair. <laughs> <laughs> he did. My, but anticipating failure can kill a dream. It can kill it. Absolutely. And okay, can I make a comment at this moment? Yeah. And don't take this the wrong way. Not at all. You are really good at failing. Yes, I am. Because I think of you like applying for that job and not mm-hmm. getting it. Yeah. I think of you applying for that Food Network gig and not yeah. getting it yeah. and moving on. Like, I'm seeing Tammy Norman picking up his mm-hmm. teeth multiple mm-hmm. times. Yeah. You, go to the fr- you go to the first one. You're kicked out after the first round, right. you know. You're good at failing. And yeah. I think that is exactly what you're talking about, Becky, is right. learning how to get beyond the negativity that we tell ourselves right. in our head. And, and that comes a lot from for me, was defining success for myself. I love it. I've not heard it said that way, and I love it. Because Mm. my success, and the hardest part is, once you've defined success, is to say that your definition of my success 
it doesn't matter. Exactly. Mm-hmm. That's right? where that's, my brain went too. That's like, the hardest part. Yeah. And so once we say, okay, I had this goal in three years, you know, speaking business terms, three years, I want um, a, a mar- profit margin of X. Uh-huh. That's my goal and that's my success. Mm-hmm. And you see that and you say, yeah, that's a great goal. But if it was done in a year. Mm. And so now we're already. Like, right now you're doubting now your own i'm doubting vision. And i don't feel like i'm adequate enough my mm-hmm. my goal isn't right i'm mm-hmm. not doing it fast enough mm-hmm. we have to be okay with saying that's not my goal mm-hmm. my goal is three years yeah and mm-hmm. saying that's okay because i could shoot for that goal and fail yeah but if i have my plan and my goals and my my success already defined and not being afraid of saying like just blinders like Here's, I think we all have to have those blinders. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. I think that's courageous and so brilliant because we live in a world, thanks to the phones where I can watch what you're baking. Right. I think of it with these teenagers who are mm-hmm. going to interview in just a mm-hmm. moment, where every moment of your day, you know what your peers are doing. Exactly. And it's always going to look better than you. Mm-hmm. They're always going to have more friends than you. Yep. They're going to have better everything than you. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking in your world, mm-hmm. you're looking at bakers who are running shops in Dallas and New York and right. friends and connections or people you admire. Right. And it's perfection. Absolutely. And then meanwhile, you turn around and you got a mixing bowl that needs washing in the sink over and there. And a roof that and may be leaking. Right. And yeah. there's no one in your lobby mm-hmm. buying a exactly. cake. And mm-hmm. you're like, I suck. Right. Absolutely. I suck. And, and, that, and, and you know, and. <laughs> the, <laughs> I was like, you know, I want to go like, I want to go consult a therapist. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, did I tell you about my alcoholic uncle? No, <laughs> that's a previous episode. Uh, no, um, you know what I mean? Like yes. at that point, because comparison will kill the dream too. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, you know, I've got this dream. I've got this goal. Mm-hmm. Oh, my friend over there looks at the, you know, and their Instagram is already, you know, yeah. and, and you know what I mean? You can, mm-hmm. it can, it, how do you get past that? I guess that's what you're talking about. Yeah, you come up with your own dis- Right, definition. and it's, sometimes it's easier to decide what you want than it is to block out what everybody else wants you to have mm-hmm. because that's not that's not what's going to make me happy that may force you your hand into something that you couldn't do like i couldn't run cake buds johnson city cake buds in new york no that would never work it would have to oh i think you'd kill people it might it, awesome. but it would adapt the business would adapt right Bet right midler as yeah, i wouldn't go <laughs> in new york charging what i charge now it oh, would yeah. never work. Yeah. Oh, I see. But it could adapt to that. Right. Right. What? Okay. So um, our time is coming to an no. end, and we have some teenagers <laughs> who want to talk to no. you. Yes. What? Um. What's next? What's next for Cake Buds? What's next for Timmy Norman? Gosh, I don't know. Uh, so cake besides buds, a cake that looks like a medical form. Right. So yeah. <laughs> and like my vision for that, I'm like, gosh, like, I used to roll in this thing, this file thing it was on wheels i used to roll that thing into medical forms uh, meeting i was like man oh and just, just have all the forms thing. yeah i can make the whole thing with the form sitting on top i already see it like i know what this honest to goodness that was like the moment in the shows when you all have to come yeah. get together and you draw and you're like yeah. what if we did this what mm-hmm. if santa claus was in the dentist chair you know that type of thing yeah okay so you just did that right here mm-hmm. on our podcast yeah that's what happened so you're saying you you're you're open to i mean life for you is that unexpected yeah phone call, so right, right now um i've started doing um classes okay. in the in the bakery and so um i've had huge huge success with that and so it's like wow i can like do these classes that's tons of fun and it so you're moving on to right. the teaching part of yeah it now. I, I love, love that, that. And you're taking and you're working with your clients mm-hmm. and creating creations to make people mm-hmm. happy, which is Absolutely. which makes me sad that we are going to have to turn over the microphone because <laughs> I did want to ask you: Do you have a f- Christmas? Because this is our Christmas episode. Mm-hmm. Do you what do you love to eat at the holidays? Because do you do you bake for yourself and your family? And what do you love? Yes, I do. So um, my favorite thing is an apple tart to ten. Oh yes, it's, it's like it caramelized apples in a I usually do it in a um, cast iron skillet. So you like oh. caramelize the apples and then you put the pie dough on top uh-huh. and you bake it in the oven and then you flip it Invert out. It. Mm. 
We love the Great British Baking yeah. Show. My, uh, we're obsessed. Yeah. And the master class. Mm -hmm. They just made a, an apple tart tatin, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And, uh, oh, it looks so good. Oh, it's so good. Mine it's would human. stick. I oh. can't stick. It's too gooey. Because there's like, caramel on the bottom. And yeah. then there's apples. And you flip it when it's warm. And so the caramel just like falls out. But it's in nice. a competition, because they made that in the Great British. Do you ever mm -hmm. watch the Great British Baking Show? Yes, but Sometime. it's been a while. Okay, well. It's very different than the American baking show. <laughs> yes, you know, different. you know, we're yeah. they're just they're all so sweet and kind mm. and gentle and they're and routine. they're wearing their little cardigan. And they're, yeah, they're and they're just there's there's little sheep in the in the on the <laughs> estate. You know what I mean? We're like, Hey, pass me the you know. Um but it is it does it it, it can go wrong. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. I you can't had go that wrong experience cause yet with that. I've not done it on competition either, so well, gosh. Okay, so we're going to turn it over to our okay, team. Okay, great. We literally just got the wrap from one of our yeah, co Yeah, they were like, so yeah, we're like get no, out of the way. You can't mm -hmm. see it. But, um, yeah. but thank you. Thank you for talking about big dreams and yeah. how you make those things I, happen. I appreciate so this you is Elijah, and this is Susanna. Elijah's, and yeah. the contrary mm -hmm. to Susanna's intro, they're not nearly as funny as we are. They think that they, <laughs> they say in their intro that they're the oh, funny he ones. Yes, he's yeah. not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today I'm on doing a great. scale of 1 to 10? Uh, I'm a nine. 9. Yeah, I'm a 9. Good. Okay, good. That's good. Yeah. That's like good type of sleep. Yeah. Type of mood right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you generally wake up early? I do. Um, typically by 5 I'm rolling. Oh, yeah. Jeez. Is All that right. early? Yeah. What time okay. do you go to bed? 10. Yeah. Also early. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would, yeah. No. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I go to bed when you wake up, <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, again, like they were talking about, I think it was last winter, uh, we watched the Food Network mm -hmm. thing. That, that was really fun. We always like watching the Food Network yes. shows and it always marvels, uh, it, it amazes me that they have so many shows at, one, at, at like one time, you know, they're always doing right. like, these shows they always have like so many different hosts um what is it kind of like behind the scenes like trying mm -hmm. to see like all the different shows they're doing did you get a feel for like how they were putting them all together you don't because the the so food network like out contracts um with different production companies different shows and so when i was like when i'm filming holiday wars um they were just handling holiday wars and and halloween wars and so that's the only thing that i had a glimpse into um and then you know they're condensing four cameras per team and there's five teams so you've got 20 cameras and it's all going to be in six hours so 20 times six and they're putting all that into an hour and so it's so hard to imagine what are they going to show what are they not going to show an example of that is uh, when El Elizabeth and I went and competed on Food Network Challenge. We nearly had our cake about three hours into the show fall into the floor. I mean, oh. like we were literally inches from our entire showpiece gone. And it never made TV. Like, I'm talking like the most dramatic thing that happened that day. They never showed on TV. Why we, not? No one knows. What did they replace it with? I have no idea. Like, I, I watched the show back. I'm like, I don't need, Like, they personally questioned Elizabeth and I in interviews for two hours just on that episode and never showed a second of it. So it's really hard to get a, a gauge when you're filming what's, what's going to happen on TV. What are they going to show? What are they not going to show? How will they show it in sequence? You know, so it's, it's hard crazy. to see the back behind that's, the scenes. That's really cool. Yeah. One thing I've never understood is um, the things where you'll see them like they're they're baking, they're doing something, mm -hmm. and then they have like the cut scene in which they're talking about it. Mm -hmm. Do they do that like afterwards? Yes. And so mm -hmm. because you oftentimes see these like really genuine in the moment yeah. reactions from people, they're like you know they drop their cake, they're crying yeah. afterwards and stuff like that. In, yeah, and so they do it directly after, and so the emotion from the show, you're still like, you know, the adrenaline, you're still like riding yeah. off of all that and so especially like when i was interviewed after my first time i was very emotional because i had lost right. and i knew that i had lost and so i'm like, trying to tell what happened during that hour from a like 
perspective yeah. that I, you know, I'm trying to tell the story, but I'm also like, oh my gosh, in my head, like I did all of this and I, I'm going home and like mm-hmm. trying to not tell that to the, to the audience is right. crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I imagine. Wow. Um, was the overall experience at Food Network something you'd do again? Was, Absolutely. Was it positive? Yeah. Um, for sure. Like I, I enjoy it a lot. Um, I feel like competition is something that I thrive off of. Mm-hmm. And so when I'm put under a time constraint and it's something that I know millions of people may see, um, I just, I just. You're a performer. Right. Wow. Yeah. Sometimes it feels like that. It's like, well, yeah. I'm not going to show people how I do this. And that's, yeah. that's so much fun. What's your favorite thing you've baked on Food Network? Probably. Uh, um, big time bake. We did a habanero carrot cake. I love carrot cake and I love spicy things. Uh-huh. And it the combination of those two turned out so perfectly that it is by far tasting wise the most my most favorite thing that we've done. Have you ever recreated it? Yes. Mm-hmm. That sounds really good. Yeah. Would you rather do anything other than Holiday Wars? Is there like a show that you would, if you could be on mm. any of them, be? I want to be on Halloween Wars. Mm. Um, I really want to do that one. Um, I just think prize money's larger. You know, we all want to win the money. The prize money's larger on ho- on Halloween Wars, and it's just totally different. Like you're doing glitter and snow for hel- on Holiday Wars, and then Halloween Wars. It's blood and gore you know it's yeah. just a yeah. completely different ends of the spectrum that would be awesome yeah i would yeah, be on cutthroat kitchen oh that'd be so that much would, fun yeah <laughs> honestly so much fun yeah something like that or chopped or yeah i feel like it'd be so stressful one of the though. huge shows mm-hmm. yeah is it is it realistic that people get their things done like two seconds before the time yes. ends or is that like mm-hmm. an editing thing no that is 100 percent real i've seen and and typically the, they will show it on tv if someone finishes early, mm-hmm. they show it. They show them like standing there not doing anything, and then they're like the judges are harping at them for not putting more effort in. That's real, because those people finished early and didn't do any more work. And um, I I know on Holiday Wars because Elizabeth and I are such perfectionists, we were like always hoping there was an extra minute. <laughs> like, can we do one more thing? Like, yeah. And so yeah, it's it's always last minute. That's cool. That is really cool. Mm-hmm. I really liked that one judge on Cupcake Wars. It's the guy. Do you know what I'm talking about? Probably. I'll have to look it up for Probably, you. Probably. He's yeah. hilarious. Um, so, what was the question I had for you? What is some advice you would give to a team that's trying to follow their dreams but doesn't know where to go? Um, I think if you find something that you're passionate about and you know it, that's the step one. And then step two, I say, find someone that you really trust that you can just bounce those things off of. And I think those two things will lead lead you down the right path. And so if I'm passionate about making cakes and I have someone that preferably doesn't know anything about it because I want them to see it from a different perspective yeah. than I do, that can say, you know what, from my perspective, that's not the best idea. And knowing that that's someone that I trust, then I can pull that in and say, okay, well, let's find the middle ground. Like, where does it make sense? Mm-hmm. It, does, it does for me, but it doesn't for them, but I trust them. And so I think that's a huge thing in, in, in you know, going after your dreams. Yeah. Like, you have a dream, just find that person that can help steer you. So you would keep that person with you along the ride? Right. Yeah. yeah. Just always somebody in the background that you can say, hey, Josh, what do you think about this? Yeah. You know. Hey, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> what's, the, what's the importance of planning your dreams, planning the steps that you have to take to reach those dreams? I think it's very important, but I think you also have to be willing to change. And so I think that every success story has a, a shift along the way, and we have to be willing to accept that, which plays back into having that person that you can talk to that says, you know, I don't think this is the, is the best. And so if you are passionate about it, you're willing to make the changes, you're willing to do whatever it takes to do that, then you can change with it and you can find the step-by-step how to get there. That's cool. Um, 
to go to baking, I uh, mm-hmm. just wanted to get a couple takes from you. Okay. Um, first, what is your favorite thing, enjoyment-wise, from you to bake? Favorite thing, enjoyment-wise, to bake would probably be cheesecake, because I love cheesecake. I love cheesecake. Mm-mm. I love cheesecake. She doesn't like cheesecake. Mm-mm. I don't know why. You've not had a good one. I, I don't it's understand sad. how you... <laughs> you can make me one. It's really sad that you've not had a good cheesecake. Yeah. Yeah, I love cheesecake. It's it's great. Mm-hmm. It's great. Um, we can argue about it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll argue about it another time. Uh, what's the hardest thing to bake? Um, anything that involves pastry dough is very hard to bake um, because it requires a proper dough, requires proper butter and then how you layer those it's just it's very time consuming because it takes days yeah do you ever use blow torches or anything yes all the time yeah Mm, i love blow torches baked alaska yes baked alaska and like another huge thing which is very surprising that you would use for is um when you're making um cream cheese icing and so you have to store it in the fridge right because it's cheese based and dairy based and so when you pull it out of the fridge it's super cold you can't ice a cake with it you put it in your mixing bowl blow torch it while you're mixing it it brings it to temperature quicker and then oh you man that would it's be so fun. much fun it's so much fun. i would start yeah. cooking just to be able to use a blow torch yeah so. mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah um i you might have said it earlier i think it might have been that apple thing but um what baked good speaks christmas the most to you is it that it's the apple tart to them yeah, yeah, I love it. And then, you know, fruit cake, if you get a good one, is yeah. I, you Christmas. see, I've never had a good one. I, think it's I don't even fun. like to make them. They're, <laughs> you know, like it's so hard to get a good one. But when you do get a good fruit cake, it's delicious. Yeah, yeah. Are you a fan of fondant? I am. Yeah, um, I'm a fan of fondant for a couple of reasons. It's a smoother looking cake. It's a prettier cake. But we make it homemade in the in the bakery, and right. so it's not store bought. I'm not a fan of store bought fondant. Yeah. I've never tasted one that I am a fan of. Um, but it's marshmallows and powdered sugar. It's the only two ingredients other than van- the vanilla extract. So so it doesn't taste like a car tire to it you. It does not taste like that. It tastes like a really sweet marshmallow. Okay, That's we good. need to get yeah. that. You see, I've never mm-hmm. had a good fondant. No. Everything I know about baking, it's just I haven't had a good enough one yet. <laughs> there we go. Okay, are you ready to play our game? Yes. We're going to alternate. He's going to ask you a question, then me. Yeah, we have some trivia for you Okay. Um, to test your baking knowledge. So <laughs> first one mine's is... Mine's Christmas. Yeah, my, oh. my, mine's bak- okay. baking Christmas. Baking, yeah. Okay. So, yep. Um, uh. What is an egg wash used for in baking? And uh, you might just be able to tell me, but I have A, B, C, and D. Okay, so, so what I use an egg wash for is to... A couple of different things. Um, so you use it in on pies, or you can use it um, on pastry, and it will make it a more golden brown. And sometimes, if you do it right, it will add a like a gloss to it. So it gives well, it a glossy finish. What's the most yeah. Like it, A is it gives a glossy finish and promotes browning. Yes, that's it. Yeah, so. A. And that's correct. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm good. Talking to a baker here. I'm good. Yeah. We can quit now, right? Okay. No. Wow. What is Frosty the Snowman's nose made out of? Your time is definitely up. <laughs> corn cob, right? In the song, right? Is yeah, it a corn, corn? Cob pipe? Pop and a button nose. Okay, I was trying to sing it's it. It's a button, yeah. It's a button, yeah. I was going to get there. Okay. <laughs> is that a... One, is that half right? Mom, you can leave the room. You're excused. <laughs> okay, uh, next baking one. Uh, of the following, which is the best traditional way to serve? Serve. I, I can't pronounce that. Uh, uh, good you, job. You're reading you off of a website. It? Yeah, how do you know. spell it? <laughs> it's F O C A C C I A. Focaccia? <laughs> Focaccia, yeah. Um, a in a narrow wine glass with a glass. With a slice of uh, cheese <laughs> in a bowl with whipped cream and berries sliced with a flavored oil to dip it in or boiled with red potatoes and clams on the side. Mm-hmm. I say boiled with <laughs> the clams on the side. <laughs> All right. What's the answer? Is it C? 
Shouldn't that be opinionated? It says, it says it's incorrect. It's, it says it is um, drizzled with Bean. olive oil and herbs and yeah. and stuff. You can also um, put tomatoes on it. It's delicious. Yeah. Okay, what kind of Christmas is Bing Crosby dreaming of? Who? Uh, it said <laughs> Bing Crosby. Bing Crosby. White Christmas. You can leave the room now. <laughs> Got that one right. Yep. Um, Make what it snappy logic. Okay, on. okay, yeah. What is a blondie? A blondie is a brownie that doesn't have chocolate in it, technically. Okay. Um, Last yes. question. No, it's not. <laughs> what country did gingerbread houses originate from? I'm going to say... Hmm. Time is definitely... United Kingdom. Question. Germany. That's up there, right? It's pretty close. I, I've heard that they're actually based off of Hansel and Gretel. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. No. Or is Hansel and Gretel based on that? I, I saw online, so it has to be true. Mm, this is true. Yeah. Speaking of gingerbread houses. Yeah. Wait till you see mine. Wait till you see mine. Ooh. Uh, so Tell us good. about that competition in Jonesboro. I'm interested. Yeah, so from December 4th, which is Friday, right, till December 20th, you can go downtown to downtown Jonesboro, and they have gingerbread houses in the windows. And so then you can vote for there's three categories uh children adults and then professional you can vote once per category per email and it's i mean it's going to be awesome who's sponsoring it um i guess downtown jonesboro oh, okay. yeah. i was wondering if grove park was having their they're having theirs but it's virtual oh, okay. yeah hmm. you need to apply i may after i did this one it was a lot of fun well we're taking angela's um Class. Class. Yeah. Serenity Knoll on December the 13th. So she, she has a great class. Yeah, I'm sure after that, I'll be ready for the yeah. Grove Park conference. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> you should grab that. Yes. Uh, so um, before we go, mm-hmm. where can people find you and your company? Yeah, the best places are Facebook and Instagram. Facebook, it's at Cake Buds, and then Instagram is at Cake Buds JC. And then our website is mycakebuds.com. We're located downtown Johnsboro, 410 South Rock Street. It's awesome. Yeah, downtown thank you. Johnson City. I'm not in Johnsboro. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was there for Johnson a minute, City. and now I'm back in Johnson City. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's where I'm at. Uh, but, yeah, we would just like to thank you so much for mm-hmm. coming Thank on. you for your time today. I really appreciate it. I really it. appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We had a good time. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Kelly. Thank you.